Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. Very often when we're practicing jazz, we're getting lost in all the exotic skills and advanced arpeggios and upper structures. And really, if you check out transcriptions and if you listen to some of the great solos, it's surprising that most of the stuff that's going on is really just the simple, basic stuff that's already there in the chords. So that's also what you want to practice the most. In this video, I took a blues in G and I'm going over a solo that I played on that blues in G using different triads, really focusing mostly on the diatonic triads. And there are five different triads that you can work with that work extremely well if you're improvising over a G7. And this is stuff that I'm using all the time and I'm going over that, but also covering some triads for the other chords and also a few altered surprising triads that you can throw in there if you want to. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. The first phrase is really simple because this is a blues in G and the first chord is G7 and the most simple basic triad to use is a G major triad. And that's also what I'm doing here. It's really just a root position G major triad. Uh, I'm starting on the third and then I'm playing the repeated uh, fifth here. So the D is played twice and you really want to have also just a solid vocabulary of the very basic phrases, especially if you're playing on something like a 12 bar blues because that's probably a little bit more about playing down in the chord and just closer to the original changes and not so much in the upper structures and alterations and extensions. And uh, here I'm, I'm just using the root position and repeating the fifth here at the end of the phrase. So, and that's, that's definitely something you want to check out using. You also want to check out, of course, the inversions. So the first inversion, the second version and see if you can make some lines with that. I would really just say sit down and play the chord, see what you can come up with. And just playing a little bit around to see if you can find some, some notes around there. Use uh, mostly just the notes from the scale. So in this case, G7. We have the C major scale around it, that, that is sort of the, the pool of notes that I'm drawing from. Uh, and what you also notice is that I'm using some leading notes. In this case, I'm sliding into the third, which of course the third is a good note to have a leading note for uh, when it comes to a major chord, and especially for blues. And I don't really think of it as, as a passing note or as a chromatic note. I'm not really assigning that much importance to it. It's really just a matter of phrasing and you can do it with all of the notes in the triad. So. And that's also worthwhile checking out. And I really think the best way to work with this is just to take the triad and just try and come up with some melodies and see if you can hear something. And in that way, get something into your vocabulary. From the first phrase, I'm moving into the second bar uh, just using a small phrase to pick up and to point towards the C7 in the second bar. And I do that just using the D and the F, so. And then resolving that to the third of the C7. And then I'm just adding these two notes of the E and the C and the B flat, just all chord tones, all arpeggio notes, nothing too fancy, but not any triads either. Then it moves back to the G7. And here we have the triad from the third of the chord. So in this case, this is a G7 and the third is of course a B. The triad you have here in the scale is a B diminished triad. So, And really the melody is pretty much the same as what I played or a variation on what I played on the G uh, in the first bar. So we have the, and here it's, and then I'm extending it. So the idea is still just using repeated notes and just using the triad. And then of course also just adding the idea that I'm ending the melody on an offbeat, which makes it just sound a little bit more jazzy and it makes it easier to phrase nicely. And again, you can use, it's almost as if I'm using the D as a pedal note in this case, so. 
from here the solo moves on to the next note in the chord, really. So that's just the triad that's found on the fifth of the chord. So in that case, this is uh, a D minor triad, so D, F, and A. And now we have just the fifth, the seventh, and then the ninth in there. And um, I continue with this one, but then immediately after having played this triad, we're kind of in the transition to the C7 in bar five. And I'm doing that by altering the G7 dominant. And here I'm using the triad of the tritone substitution. So if we have a G7, the tritone of uh, G is D flat. And uh, because we have G and then we have the fifth and the flat five is D flat. And that's actually the triad I'm using. So I first play the D minor triad and then go into the D flat. And then that's pulling me, it's kind of giving me this sound and pulling me to the C7, which I'm also just resolving to with the G. On the C7, I'm also using the triad from the fifth of that chord. So the fifth of C is of course G, so that's a G minor triad. So I'm coming out on the G on beat one, down to the E, and then I'm adding a descending G minor triad from the third, so that's a second inversion, descending G minor. And then that's also kind of taking me to the E on beat one of the C sharp diminished bar here. And here the notes that I'm using are all just C sharp diminished triad notes. So I'm starting on the third and then up to the flat five, down to the root. And this then takes me to the back to the G7 because that's the note that I can just easily resolve up to a G7 by moving it up to a D. Back on the G7 in bar seven, the triad I'm using now is the triad from the seventh of the chord. So I'm still just moving up the chord really. And uh, the triad we have up here is an F major triad. So that's what I'm playing here. I'm coming out on the D on beat one, and then I'm playing the F major triad as a descending triplet, and then also following it up with a B and a G. So the, the F major triad, if you play it as a chord, it's gonna give you like a, a G7 sus, actually a G7 sus with a nine. And uh, that's not really something that sounds like, like a G7, but you can still use it in your lines, but you do need to be a little bit careful with kind of dealing with the C in some way, and you'll see it used really often, either just as an F major triad or as the upper structure of a D minor, seven arpeggio. It's used all the time, but you will also see it used mostly where the B is introduced right after it's played. And that's usually the way that you'll find it in, in a solo from George Benson or Charlie Parker, where it's just used to really target the, the B and get that out there as well. But it is really a useful trying to have in there and use because you're sort of creating some movement and that actually makes the line a little bit more interesting to listen to. So in that way, it can also be useful to just explore, well, how can I play this triad? And then still get some sound, some sounds, some lines that really sound like a G7. The next bar is a 2-5 to A minor. So it's a secondary cadence to the A minor seven chord, which is the two chord in the key, because we're in the key of G. And uh, the case we have is B half diminished to E7. And of course it's to a minor chord, so you would expect that to be like a half diminished and an E7 flat nine. And the, the line that I'm playing here is actually also only using triads. So for the B half diminished, I'm using the triad from the third of the chord. And that's a D, so that's a D minor triad. And then moving into, um, so here I have, I'm ending on the A and that's just really neatly taking me to the G sharp on the E. And then here I'm using an F diminished triad. So when you have an E7 flat nine, then essentially that's a G sharp diminished with an E in the bass. And that means that you have all these diminished triads available. So you have the one from G sharp, the one from B, the one from D, and the one from F. And the one I'm using here is really just the one from F. So playing first the G sharp up to the B and then down to the F. And then I can resolve that to the fifth of A minor, which is an E here. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support and it's because of them that I can keep on making all these very specific jazz guitar and music theory videos. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page 
And if you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. On the A minor seven, I'm using two triumphs to make up the line. I'm coming out on the E, and that's of course the fifth of the chord, and I'm playing the triad from that note, so that's an E minor triad. And then I'm using the top note here, B, to leap into the next triad, which is the triad from the third of the chord, which is a C, and then I'm playing that triad also ascending. And then I move on to the D7 altered. So D7 altered is a D7 dominant where I'm using the altered scale, which is in this case, the D7 altered is the same as E flat melodic minor. And two of the triads that I have available in E flat melodic minor are A flat. So that's the triad from the tritone of the D. So I'm using that one first, this pattern. And then I'm skipping up and using the E flat minor triad because of course in E flat melodic minor, we have an E flat uh, minor triad. Same, same pattern. So I'm really working with this pattern a lot. So. And I'm actually re resolving this because I'm playing an E flat minor triad here. I can resolve that up a half step and then play an E minor triad when I go back to G7. So, and just repeat the melody. And in that way, that's sort of making a smooth transition. And the E minor triad is actually a great triad for the, for the G7 because I have really the third is in there, it's clear that that's, that that's part of the chord, the root and then the 13. So notes that work really well on the G7. And I'm taking this a little bit further because after that, to go back to the beginning of the chorus, we have a D7 and I'm using the same pattern, but then using uh, again a triad that's essentially from the alto scale, which is a, in this case, like a D augmented or an F sharp augmented triad, so playing the same melody as I did on the E. And then that's taking me back to the one in the next chorus. So for the G7, the triads that I went over in this video, and which I'm really mostly just talking about the basic G7 and not so much about a G7 altered, then we have the main triad of the chord, so just G major triad. And of course, just move up through the chord and then the one from the third which is B diminished, and then the D minor, and also the F major triad, and then also the E minor triad. So, so that means that we have five different triads that we can use, and then the remaining two triads, which is like an A minor and a C major triad, are not that easy to use on a G7. You could explore them a bit, but I would say with the amount of triads you already have available now, then I would just work on those. Really just take one of them, like let's say we, we work with, uh, with the D minor triad, and then just here, like, or put in, put in a loop or a G7 like this. And just see if you can come up with some lines, mix, the triad, and don't only play the triad notes, you can do that as well, of course, but see what it is like to make some melodies where you're using the triad and then adding the scale tones that are in between, because then you can make much more varied melodies. And I think that's a better way of developing some good sounding melodies with the triad that still fit this chord. If you want to check out a guitar player who's really fantastic at using triads in his solos and creating some really great sounding bebop lines, mostly based on triads, then check out this video on a George Benson solo on Billy's Bounce. If this is the first time you see one of my videos and you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next time.